Good afternoon, folks. Uh, and it is afternoon, it's not evening. It kind of looks like after, or, uh, evening out there, but we're in the middle of a big storm right now. Uh, but as you can see, the trees whipping around out there. Pretty cool. Uh, did some cool stuff with a ham antenna today, and I got some stuff I kind of wanted to show everybody, but I don't really feel like being out there right now. There's some thunder. Uh, hooked everything up and hey it worked and then heard a rumble of thunder and had to unhook everything so that in case it got hit by lightning uh, I don't have lightning arresters yet in my coax or uh, the antenna is not grounded or anything so hooked it up it works but I had to unhook it because of this crap so uh, I put up another solar panel today and a little battery box go away kitty nobody likes you uh, little battery box and charge controller to dedicate just to the the ham radio which is actually going to be delivered tomorrow maybe I'll make this like a two part video maybe I don't know maybe I'll just smush everything together whatever but yeah I thought I'd share the the cool looking storm and the kitty meow well good morning folks uh, all the storms blew through last night and uh Got pretty hairy there for a little bit, but it is a nice sunny morning here. Well, a little bit of clouds, but a little light breeze. At least it's not raining and storming now, and I don't think it's supposed to today. So I can finally show you what I did up here. Uh, this is my 2 meter 5 8 wave ground plane antenna. I think that shows up there. And I got him sticking up right there. Uh, you can see there's something new up here. I brought up an old solar panel I had laying around and uh, it's all hooked up and going to a battery and a little charge controller which I'll show you here in a little bit uh, yes yeah, so you can see there's two sections of pipe the bottom part is a j-pole that I actually ordered and had the antenna mounted on in a different location and I had this other little section of pipe laying around and I thought well, you know, maybe I can get it up just a little bit higher Maybe I can get out a little farther and That works it does But the only thing I don't like about it is it's ugly <laughs> uh, I put that tape around it right there not to hold the sections together, but to hold the, the uh, conduit and or the uh, coaxial in there And it just looks ugly. I don't like the look of it another thing. I don't like about it where it is is this tree is right behind it I suppose it would probably be better in the winter after all the leaves are gone but right now I'm pretty sure those leaves are interfering a little bit so I will have to relocate this I'll probably end up putting him over there on the corner where there isn't a whole lot around there which is kind of where it originally was but for now uh, for my good coax that's <laughs> that's about as far as I can get so yeah like I said that's a 100 watts polycrystalline the you know the blue kind man that thing is dirty I have to clean that thing off uh, but yeah that's uh it's where it's at and actually I could probably show you something else pretty cool here this tape that I put on if I can get up here without falling off the edge of the roof this tape right here it looks like just normal old electrical tape it's not it uh, there's no sticky on it it doesn't have any any uh, adhesive it's just like a, a rubber and it sticks to itself really really well I was really surprised about that uh, it's made for sealing up electrical uh, hook up thingamajigs connections so yeah you can see it it's not even it doesn't peel off there it stays on pretty good so of course I where my uh, where the coax goes in I seal that off and I seal it off where the antenna goes onto the ground plane yeah in an attempt to, to kind of keep it all keep it all weatherproof yeah I'd say it's probably uh, 12 foot above the roof there to the to the top maybe yeah maybe not that far something yeah, yeah I don't know it's, it's about six foot here head high so you see I'm actually reaching up to to get to it but yep this tree is right in the way and I'm not cutting the tree down, but yeah, I guess I'll have to relocate it when I get some new coax. So this is a battery 
that I uh, that I got the shoulder panel running to, and I got water in it because of the lid. This is just a little Rubbermaid tub. The lid held water, and when I took it off, I dumped the water right down in there. So that's something I'm gonna have to have to straighten up. It's a little uh, 30 amp PWM charge controller hooked it right there and you can see there's a little water laying down in there yeah that ain't good i gotta get a drain hole in that i suppose uh but yeah it's it is doing its thing and it works uh yeah i, I, I was gonna put the battery inside and i don't know why i had some weird gut feeling about just not doing that and i usually trust my gut feelings so no it's outside and it's just it's probably gonna sit there probably end up, end up leaving it out here all winter whenever winter gets here of course but I'll probably insulate it and good stuff like that but I you know I don't know why I just had a weird gut feeling about not putting this thing in the house it's an old battery uh, I don't know I just I didn't trust it so it's gonna live out here so this is where my coax comes in here uh, and this is the the power source it's an old extension cord that I sacrificed uh, to run the power into the house uh, my new transceiver has not arrived yet it's supposed to be delivered today so I've got it hooked up to this this cheap little Chinese Bofang radio through the, the adapter here I think this adapter was like eight bucks it's from a, it's got an SO239 on one side and then the SMA and it does work pretty well Channel mode. yeah I mean nobody's transmitting anything right now but uh, maybe we can hear something here well, I mean, I can hear people from approximately, I don't know, 50 miles away sometimes, from a repeater, of course. Uh, don't know what the repeater wattage is. I'm assuming around 100 watts. Uh, this little guy will only do 5 watts, I think, at max, or something close to 5 watts. I don't really actually have a way to measure that. I'm just going off with what it was supposed to be. I don't know. So, yeah, once the other transceiver gets here, we will be hooking it up and it's probably going to live right around here uh, as a as a permanent thing so yeah we don't need that on right now so yeah that's uh that's the little thing i've been working on for now hey everybody so this is the uh transceiver that i've ordered uh it's not going to be here until i'm already gone today i've got a whole bunch of crap to do and I'm going to be back late tonight, and I kind of wanted to get this video up, so I was going to show you guys the pictures of it here. Uh, as you can see, it is a very relatively small, plain Jane 2 meter transceiver. Uh, not a lot of bells and whistles with it. Uh, it's got the, over here, the little data port. That's where the mic goes in. And I'm not sure, but I think you can probably program this one from a, from your computer, like, like a lot of radios you can now that actually have the, the data port slash microphone input. Uh, I assume this knob is the volume push on off. This is probably your function button over here knob that you can turn. Uh, it's a Kenwood TM281. Of course, you can see her right here. And I assume this right here is probably the speaker. So, uh, yeah, see, it's just a, a plain Jane mobile transceiver and it's going to be my base unit it, uh, it's gonna be permanently mounted here in my little office area uh, it does 25 watts on the low side and on high power it does 65 watts so that is already a huge step over this little bow thing that I've been using uh, look at the back a uh, big heat sink and I assume it doesn't have a fan in it. that's probably why the heat sink is so big there's your as a 239 antenna input your power supply and a speaker external speaker jack uh, and there's a side view and this big heat sink sticking out the back back here but it is what it is uh, here's the front side of the microphone keypad uh, and there's the I think there's a better one here yeah yeah you can see that's uh, how the mic hooks into it just like a normal it looks like an Ethernet cable with your data hookup and it doesn't really come with a whole lot uh, there's uh, the mounting bracket, the mic holdy uppy hooky thingy, an extra blade fuse, and uh, whoops, and of course the screws and bolts and stuff. If you notice, there's a fuse in line on this side of the power line from the the plug here, the plug that actually goes into this one. 
and there is another fuse so that's kind of cool it's got two fuses on it so uh, that's kind of nice to have uh, but yeah it's not it's not anything really special uh, but it's gonna be my little base station and uh, yeah after I get it hooked up and everything maybe I'll show you in operation uh, sometime but uh, well that's pretty much it for today folks I uh, hope everybody's enduring the heat and the storms that we've been having lately so don't worry it'll be snowy and muddy here soon enough <laughs> okay everybody well have a good one